October is my absolute favourite time of the year, and to celebrate, my partner and I here exclusively watch only the bestest of the horror genre. We also love trying to tie LEGO into that equation in any way that we possibly can. So over the next month, I'll be taking a look at some of the best LEGO horror inclusions from one of my favourite LEGO themes that ever released, Monster Fighters. Released in 2012, and some of those sets retired that same year, a couple of them made it into 2013, the line featured some of LEGO's best translations of some of the most famous iconic horror characters of all time. One of LEGO's own original creations, the sets took an inspiration from the Universal Monsters roster of characters. Now the line appealed to both adults and to kids. The theme's original story is that of a Dr. Rodney Rathbone who uncovers the nefarious plot from Lord Vampire, the ruler of the monster realm. He plans to turn our days into night permanently and to rule the mortal world by unleashing his monster army. To do this, Lord Vampire needs six moonstones to help power a machine of his own creation. It's up to the team of monster fighters to stop him. Classic LEGO original plotline seen in many themes before this one. If you enjoy these videos, liking and subscribing does help to support this channel in creating more videos just like this. This is set 9465 The Zombies, which apparently according to some people it released later than the rest of the wave by only a few months apparently, retailed for 80 NZD and it now sells for Oh, okay, 492 NZD, so yeah, I'm sensing that there was definitely something special about this one's release. Where do we even begin with zombies? White Zombie is labelled as apparently being the first ever zombies movie that starred Bela Lugosi, and what gets me is that despite looking just like Dracula in that depiction, he does not play Dracula, which released just one year earlier. It was filmed on the Universal lot, but some negative scores I guess mean that Universal don't really count it as one of their greats, and I don't really think that there is a definitive singular zombie character compared to someone like the Wolfman or like a definitive Frankenstein's monster. Zombies would then go on to be the biggest thing in the world for decades, a long time there. In my eyes, I think the zombie phase kind of peaked around the 2013 and 14 era. That's kind of the crossover where you had things like World War Z, The Last of Us, Dying Light, Walking Dead, that sort of stuff. I think that all kind of came out around that point. We still get the occasional movie and game, absolutely we still get the occasional games, but mostly the early 2000s, this stuff was just everywhere. The set overview here is a graveyard, immediately the set is a win in my book, with the addition of a mausoleum and a big truck. The big truck is quite impressive in my eyes, its design is very bulky and it has a play feature that's really fun to mess around with. At the front of this truck here is a plow, which in the context of driving around through a graveyard and taking out zombies sounds very messy to me. The car is built around this base piece, which is one from the Ferris Quest line. It might have appeared in some other lines, but I always associate it to the Ferris Quest sets. There's a couple of flick fire missiles up top for that extra overkill damage against the zombies, and there's a little bit of standing room here at the back as well. Now onto the wheels and how they work. You got two little ones and two massive ones. The massive ones here are connected through some gears, and those gears move the hammers up top. Move the car and the hammers will move as well. This feels like a Dead Rising gimmick to me and I love that inclusion. The graveyard gives us exactly what was needed for a build like this. We really get these types of builds outside of things like the Harry Potter line, but this is a genuine cartoon styled horror crypt. Two graves and a small mausoleum type build. Perfect. The graves idea has been made before I think across a couple of other themes, so it's a pretty standard building technique here. A moonstone sits right inside before a cauldron. Now the monster fighters theme is starting to incorporate some witchcraft elements into the sets. I love the overall structure of the sets design. The colour matching I wish was maybe a little bit different here. The graves do have to be connected to the temple which is a shame because I'd like to be able to separate them a little, but it is in service for the play feature. Up top is a bat symbol or maybe it's just a bat perched. At the back we do have a church stained glass window. Window. Very simple in its design, but it's enough to bring a little bit of colour into the set. Right below it is a red lever, and I bet you're wondering what that does. Inside sits a cauldron with all sorts of gunk inside. If you flick down on that red lever, the cauldron goes flying. It's got bones and slime mostly inside, one of those very simple but effective type of mechanics. But this next gimmick is the absolute standout. You can turn the moonstone and the zombies will awake from their slumber. This is the first time that the moonstone is actually being used for a play feature, and it gives it more of a reason for why it needs to be taken. The graves do not feature too much inside them, but they do house the figures quite nicely. Same builds for both sides, a very smooth feature to use as well. I was pretty determined to try to get the hammers to slam down on the graves and to stop the zombies from rising. It's easier said than done, but I did get there in the end. This is Jack McHammer, he is the fourth member of the crew that we're looking at here. He is a burly lumberjack minifigure who features a pretty cool prosthetic arm because he had his taken from him from a mad scientist who needed it to create monsters. 
He's pretty great at using a few different parts from the city type civilian characters like the crooks beanie here and a lumberjack torso. I really wanted him for that Thor hammer because I didn't have a Lego Thor at the time when this released. He has an angered expression, a really nice green shirt. The best thing that I can say about him is that he does bring some much needed colour variety to the group who was just consisting of yellows, greys, browns and reds up until this point. Some green and blue does look really nice but he's not that major to me, probably my least favourite of the bunch. This is the Zombie Bride, the first set that we're looking at with more than one minifigure as well. Three monsters in this released in total. The Zombie Bride is my favourite of the zombies that were included. I like to imagine that she's the lead zombie here out of the crew, mostly because I don't think she can fit in the grave with her dress piece. She features the rare occasion of having a bloody face, which LEGO minifigures tend to always shy away from. I'm not sure what LEGO's in-universe explanation is for this, I don't know what they claim it to be, maybe grape juice or tomato sauce or something like that, but to me it definitely resembles a bloodied eye and a bloody mouth, so I love the attention to detail on this minifigure. This is the groom who is just as neat especially with that top hat there, but he lacks the mature details that I really love about that bride figure, she's a lot cooler to me than he is. I like the grey skin and those yellow eyes, but you could say the same thing about the bride. I like him a lot just not in comparison to that bride figure. A really good cartoony styled minifigure. And this is the driver who features very similar details as the groom. He wears one glove, his suit is all tattered, and he has some nice tears here and there. Also really nice, good world building minifigure, just wish that there was a bit more of a distinguishable detail on him. Our moonstone here is the zombies one with some hard to see details but the image is actually a lego arm reaching out of the ground. This moonstone only appeared in this set and was not included in the dracula set which contained every other moonstone that released across this theme. Instructions were of a bigger booklet here, the theming shows the moon in that top corner, on the back we have an advertisement for the set and an image that shows off all of the sets together. The first row here have been covered on this channel already, on the other side we have a cool image of the theme and Max from the Lego Club warns us before the wind kid scares us. The Zombies and Their Graveyard is one of my favourite sets from this line, I just wish I knew the information for exactly why it's so expensive and rare on the aftermarket, but it's great for featuring my ideal design of a cartoon styled graveyard. I grew up watching this Treehouse of Horror special so this fits that bill for me perfectly. Despite featuring a Monster Fighters character that I'm not super fond of compared to those others, this is one of the cooler horror sets to be made in LEGO. If you enjoyed this review and you want to see some more Monster Fighters videos, liking and subscribing does help to support this channel. Kakite Ano.